find your breath. Remember that the thoughts going through your mind don't destroy the breath, they just obscure it. Once you've found the sensation, hold on. Regardless of the, the winds that come blowing around, you're not going to get blown over. That's the determination you have to make, and then you have to stick with it. And you find yourself blown away, well, just come back, hold on again. This is one of those practices where you have to make up your mind that you really want to succeed no matter what. And you're not going to let anything discourage you. You're just going to keep coming back, coming back, coming back. And if you wonder, when is it going to get quiet? Well, it gets quiet after you get better and better at coming back. Because you'll be developing mindfulness and alertness at the same time. The alertness to realize you've slipped off. And the mindfulness that reminds you where you should be. And then you're ardent in coming back, which means you come back right away. Any thoughts that have come through the mind, leave them unfinished. You're not committed to completing them before you get back. It's a strange thing in the mind. We start thinking about a particular topic and we say, well, let me finish this first and then I'll come back to the breath. That way our commitment is more to our thoughts. The Buddha says you should commit yourself to what he calls the heightened mind, the mind that's lifted above its thoughts. Think of the Buddha's image of a person who's ascended a tower and looks down on the people below. In this case, the people below are your random thoughts. Thoughts of greed, thoughts of aversion, thoughts of delusion, thoughts of disappointment, depression, whatever. You want to stand up above them. That's what's meant by the heightened mind. And what is that tower? He calls it the Tower of Discernment, but to get up the Tower of Discernment requires concentration. It requires a place where you can step out of your thoughts. So the breath is right next to the mind, but it's not in the mind. In other words, it's the closest thing in the body to the mind. It's also the most sensitive to the movements of the mind. which can be for good or for ill. You want to use it for good. In other words, learn to breathe in a way that's soothing, and that will have an impact back on the mind. But it's your determination to keep at this, keep at this. That's what's going to make the difference. So try not to let anything dissuade you, not let anything lead you astray. Divert your attention. This is why we're here, to get the mind settled in. We have our chores. We try to do them in such a way that the mind is not diverted from its real purpose. When you can think in these terms, then changes will come in the mind. It may be gradual. The Buddha talks about a carpenter using an adze, which is a tool very much like a hammer, as a wooden handle. And he knows that the handle is going to get worn down with over time. But he looks at it from day to day to day, and he can't see how much it's been worn down. But eventually it will get worn down. So if progress seems slow, don't worry, there is progress each time you come back. Each time you come back with the intention to stay at least a little bit longer, and a little bit longer than that, and a little bit longer than that. It's in that way that your mindfulness, your alertness, your ardency, concentration, discernment, all these good qualities get strengthened. <laughs>